What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be reviewing Lance Zerline's brand new smoking hot mock draft. There's a lot of buzz going around the community on this so you guys have a lot in store because I am also continuing this for another round so stay tuned for that as well. If you guys are new I would love for you guys to stick around. Lots of mock draft content like this. I know I promised you guys a mock draft today but literally this just came out and it is extremely, extremely hot. So let's get right into it. Like starting off with the number one overall selection, uh, I am I have a lot of respect for Lance Zerline. He's very vocal, especially on Twitter. So uh, we know that Lance very well might be watching this. So hello, Lance. I have already seen that your son has texted you saying he does not like the mock draft. So um, that's very entertaining. Obviously, I love the transparency there. I already know there's a lot of picks in here and a lot of trades that are Definitely worth discussing, so we'll get into that. Bryce Young going number one overall. I have him as the number one quarterback, but out of realism, because we have seen Frank Reich never coach a starting QB under 6'2", I do believe it'll be CJ. However, again, talent-wise, I think Bryce Young is in a league of his own. So, you know, Bryce Young still is a special talent. If he goes number one, that's awesome. Usually we know the one, two, but... This is the thing that's been getting a lot of people's attention. The Texans pass on a QB to go Tyree Wilson. And obviously, I'm not going to agree to this. Y'all have seen all the videos I do. It's a quarterback one, two. That's the way it rolls. But um, let's discuss this. And I'll just say Tyree Wilson's a great talent. I really love him. You see that frame, 270 plus, 35 and a half inch arms. Great production, still has a lot of room to improve. Great in the run game. To me, that's a great prospect. But we also have to look at the class as a whole. So if you take out everything and you just look at the prospect himself, number two overall isn't insane. We saw Trevon Walker go last year. He had a lot of upside, very similar, large frame, great athlete and uh, good in the run, had room to improve in the past. So it's not out of the world to believe that someone like Tyree could fetch a number two overall position, uh, number two overall pick. But it does in this class. Because we're talking about at least five first round quality edge rushers, give or take. And you have a number 12 overall pick. And I don't think the gap between Tyree and those dudes is that significant compared to the quarterback value, which we'll see very soon. They anal like he realizes that as well. And um, Houston Texans take it into their own hands to make sure they grab one. But to me, I just don't see the logic here. Uh, it doesn't even matter between Anderson and Wilson. That, that's not the issue. It's This is a very deep edge class, so you're getting a position of good value, but in a very stacked class. So the pick itself doesn't carry the weight that it should. And um, you're in a very weak quarterback class, and you have the selection of the second best one. You need a quarterback. That's going to move the needle the most. And again, you have the biggest opportunity cost by not selecting one there. So... Obviously, I'm going to heavily disagree with this, um, but again, if you put the blinders on and take out the rest of the entire draft, Tyree Wilson going at number two is not insane. It just is in this class. Uh, Cardinals and going Will Anderson taking advantage. This does have trades in it, so I'm very intrigued to see the Cardinals not move out since CJ Stroud is on the board. Uh, I think that a team like the Raiders could have easily capitalized on a quick move up here, but then the Ravens traded Lamar to the Indianapolis Colts. I did not trade the Indianapolis Colts second round pick. I just traded this one uh, because I just did the two first. You guys can debate whether you need to include that second round pick or not, but it is what it is. Lamar is an Indy now and CJ Stroud is a Baltimore Raven. Uh, I, again, I think if the Ravens do do this trade before the draft, I cannot see a reason why teams do not want to move up to Arizona. And um, that's just me. I mean, if CJ's on the board, he's just one of those more pro-ready quarterbacks. And if I'm Baltimore, I mean, I would be willing to potentially trade back here and then get Anthony Richardson because I think Anthony can work very well in this offense. And uh, But CJ would work very, very well as well. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Uh, if it happens, it's great. Seahawks and going Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter is a tremendous talent. Just the off-field issues are very apparent. Um, there was a great point made by one of the subs in the chat and it was saying, well, if like, there's a rumor going about the Raiders taking him off their draft board as well as other teams, apparently that guy was wrong about the Devonte Adams stuff saying they weren't even in on the deal. 
but also made a great point by saying if he was completely off their board, why would they bring him in for a top 30 visit? It's not just to do their due diligence. You wouldn't wipe someone clean off your board and then spend one of your top 30 visits on a guy. So, um, you know, you never know. It might be out there that he is going to be going top 10. I think he's kind of pretentious and kind of an ass trying to say, hey, I'm never going to even go and visit you if you're not a top uh, if you're not in the top 10. But, you know, that's another discussion for another day. If everything clears up, this is obviously excellent value. Detroit Lions going to Vaughn Witherspoon. I mean, it's fine. Again, there's quarterbacks on the board. If you can trade out of this spot, which again, this does have trades. This is a perfect opportunity for the Lions to move back, get great value and be able to load up on future picks. There are teams that need quarterback. Houston Texans are one of them. Uh, That could definitely make a move up here. But instead, you know, you took a corner and now the Raiders get to take advantage of the Texans. And for this one, I gave up. I did not give up the second round pick. I ended up giving up a third and a second next year. Again, I don't want to completely screw up the second round of this mock draft um, just for continuity's sake. But Texans moved up, got Will Levis. I mean, in my honest opinion, you could have drafted CJ Stroud at two and then made this move up to select Tyree Wilson. And you could have spent the exact same capital and got much better value. I that's that's where I'm just not understanding it. The logic is not adding up at all. Um, but again, I'm not going to hate on Will Levis. I do have him in my top 20. I still think he could be a very competent NFL quarterback. But it's just, man, like I just I don't understand the logic there. I really don't. I would love for Lance to. I mean, obviously he's a busy guy, works for the NFL Network. But if there's some chance in hell that he could come on and defend his mock draft, that would be absolutely awesome. Uh, Pick number eight for the Falcons going Christian Gonzalez. I think that's a great selection for them. Uh, Having him, he has a lot of upside and he has a lot of room to grow. So having him there with AJ Terrell, Casey Hayward would be an A plus move. Bears going Lucas Van Ness. I could totally see the Bears doing it, but you are essentially saying Justin Fields, you know, we're taking longer term projects over, you know, taking instant impacts and we're helping out the defense instead of the offense. But the defensive line is a huge mess right now. So I don't absolutely hate it by any stretch, but I don't like Lucas Van Ness. That's my thing. I'm taking my bias out of the equation. I think an edge rusher for the Bears is not impossible, but I would definitely say it should be unlikely. Then at pick number 10, the Eagles going Peter Skaronsky. I mean, O-line is something that is possible for sure. Like you do pretty much have one more year left of Kelsey. And then after that, you're kind of on your own in terms of one of those interior spots. But I mean, I think that the biggest needle mover, if you're really trying to not build for the future, but actually win now, which since you were just in the Super Bowl, you kind of should. And since you're re-signing these veterans, you're kind of communicating, hey, we want one more year. Let's win now. Bijan Robinson is going to be that pick for me. Again, biggest needle mover, maybe not the best selection for the franchise in the long run, but biggest needle mover in the short. Uh, Number 11, Titans going Jackson Smith and Jigba. They're trying to trade up to three right now. There's a lot of rumors about that. They made an offer for number one. So if Anthony Richardson is here, I can't really see them passing on him. Like Malik Willis had similar issues, but was older, had a lot more experience and still had those issues. And he's Malik's going to be an excellent, excellent backup with starter potential for the majority of his career. And I hope he ends up finding a spot where he is comfortable. Like I would love to see actually Malik go to the Ravens if Lamar decides to leave and they don't want to go after a QB, then that'd be a super cool spot for him to go. But um, Titans then going JSN instead. I'm not a huge fan of going to bigger, slower um, guys there in the receiving room. Like, obviously, slow is very, 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 like, tricky word to say. Over four or five, I, they're not slow. But you're not getting two burners. That doesn't mean that you can't in the later rounds of the draft. But I think, again, I'd go offensive line, hands down. That's my thing. And I just don't think Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to, again, move the needle for the franchise in the long or the short run the way that an offensive lineman would. Um, so, like, I know Lance... Uh, brings that up but still I mean I don't really think that wide receiver is going to be the bigger needle mover but the Raiders trade back get multiple picks and get Darnell right I think that's an A plus 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 move Darnell is my number one tackle in the draft and he's the first tackle to go off the board and this is a great spot because he can actually move to right tackle and that's great that's excellent move there by Lance obviously there were some more unfortunate things that happened before but 
if uh, I mean, I think Darnell is going to be there at 12 for sure. And I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility for a team to try to move up um, to select a guy in this range. So pick number 13, the Jets going Broderick Jones. It, it seems like a kind of guy to just shoe in at this moment. And, you know, if you get Aaron Rodgers, you're going to end up selecting Broderick Jones or another tackle or something to help out in the offense, which that's kind of the biggest thing to assist on. Patriots then going Anthony Richardson. So my buddy Cam was talking about this, which is um, I just can't really get my head around it. I've never seen Bill work with somebody like Anthony Richardson's talent. I just I don't know. It doesn't seem to make sense with what they're trying to do. And like I understand the talent. It's worth sending the pick in. I'm not going to argue with the pick, but just thinking about it chemistry wise, I've never seen someone like Anthony Richardson work with Bill, and I might be 100% wrong on that, and also hasn't really had many opportunities to work with someone like AR. But man, that's that's tough. I didn't see it work well with Cam Newton, in my opinion. I mean, Cam was, I mean, to be fair, they won enough games. They were respectable enough with someone who I think shouldn't have been in the league. So maybe it is a good decision, but, oh, man. I mean, I just, I don't want Anthony Richardson to end up being a bust. And I just think that the situation is more key on this player than arguably any of the quarterbacks, just because there's so much untapped potential and he's just so moldable. So um, that's my only issue right there. Packers going Kincaid. Uh, I was actually talking about this with a couple guys on Twitter. I don't like the idea of going tight end at 15. There's good value in round number two. But if you were to spend 15, send it to the Falcons, get Kyle Pitts, just do it. He's better value than any of these dudes. He should have been like he was deserving of that number four overall selection. And he's just being misused there. So if you really want to take a tight end and you want to use him, go Kyle Pitts. You also get your ex receiver at the same time. Uh, But realistically, Green Bay is not going to go after an offensive weapon here. They're going to go after a defensive player. Miles Murphy just tested out phenomenally, obviously, after Lance dropped this. So not going to get on Lance for that one. But it makes total sense for Green Bay to go defense right there. However, they did go that tight end route. Commanders going Paris Johnson. Even though they ended up bringing on uh, Wiley in free agency, I can't get mad at it at all. It's just really, really good value for a player who has a lot of upside. Steelers going Deontay Banks. I keep saying this is one of my favorite picks, so um, I'm not going to disagree with it at all. I kind of miss my Steelers having a good secondary, and I know a lot of y'all do too. And this is the third mock draft I've reviewed in a row that has tight end to 18. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Like, I don't think it's a big needle mover again. Like, I really don't. They still need some help. I'd rather take a linebacker here. That's just me. I'd rather take a linebacker than a tight end. That's where I'm at. So you look at the positions on the board. One, you could still go edge rusher. You got Miles Murphy here. I think he's a solid fit for this team, you know, we're talking about Tyree Wilson potentially being a good fit. You already got that defensive back in Devon Witherspoon. You still could go Kalijah Kansi, get some help on that defensive interior. Again, could go a linebacker. Hell, you could even go Brian Branch and say, hey, we're going to let you sit for a year. I don't think that's the best decision, but I think it's even better than Michael Mayer. I'd rather go Zach Koontz for this team because I trust James Mitchell to be good enough to hold down the tight end position. I could trust Koontz to be able to come in round three, round four, and just kick ass. Or a tight end round two. I think that round three plus is better. But, I mean, if you're not willing to pay TJ Hawkinson, who's a proven, proven talent, the money, why are you spending the approximate value of uh, that in a pick at number 18? It just, to me, it doesn't make sense. Tampa Bay Buccaneers going Nolan Smith. I love Nolan Smith. I'm not going to complain about it at all. I think Tampa Bay's a little bit in shambles. Uh, pick number 20, Seahawks, Miles Murphy. Jalen Carter, Miles Murphy would be an A-plus draft for me, especially if Jalen Carter's issues are uh, not very valid. Then the Chargers, I know Lance loves his Jalen Hyatt, so we're going to look at this as a deep threat, not as Jalen Hyatt himself, because I'm a bit lower on Jalen Hyatt than he is. I think everybody is at this point, but uh, Chargers getting a deep threat, not a bad selection. I just prefer a different receiver. Uh, Zay Flowers to the Ravens. Now, if you have C.J. Stroud, um, I would preferred Quentin Johnston. I think his maneuverability, it, overall, his actually his athletic traits seem pretty measure, like pretty damn close to Jackson Smith and Jigba's, but kind of more built for a boundary. I'd rather do that. I think that he'd be a lot more comfortable with it. Zay Flowers doesn't seem like the build that C.J. Stroud's been playing with at Ohio State. For you guys who are listening and saying, what the hell are you talking about? 
Remember that CJ was the selection at number four in a trade with the Colts. So that's why I'm saying that. Bill is going Bijan with a trade up to the Vikings. Um, it makes sense for the Bills. doesn't make sense for the Vikings. You got JPJ on the board um, as well as I'm tripping up. But there was another player that went right before him that would be an excellent selection. Actually, Quentin Johnston talking about him. So I think it's a bad move for the Vikings. Good move for the Bills getting a big difference maker. Then the Jaguars get JPJ, my number two player in the class. Now I can finally scroll down a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that's incredible. Incredible value. So I'm not going to really talk too much about that. Giants going Brian Branch. Without Julian Love, I think this is a very solid pick. Wick Martindale loves his defensive backs, and this would be a nasty spot for him to go um, in a good way. Then Quentin Johnston to the Cowboys. You're loading up on receivers. C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Quentin Johnston, Michael Gallup. I mean, you still have Simi Fehoko there. You still have, um, I'm forgetting the dude's name from UAB last year. They, you have weapons. So I don't think it's a bad idea at all. Obviously, TCU, like right down the road from Arlington. So they've seen plenty of Quentin Johnston. I think he'd be really great understudy of C.D. Lamb as well. So I'm not against it. I think there might be better positions to go after, but I don't know if those positions line up with the value of Quentin Johnston, who I still have as a top 10 player in the class. Um, so this is the reason why I got really butthurt about the Vikings moving back. I have Drew Sanders, my number one linebacker. Y'all can see it right here. I have Drew as my number one linebacker. I love him. But to move back, miss out on Quinn Johnston, to miss out, I mean, how on Brian Branch, on JPJ, on Bijan, because apparently Dalvin Cook might be on the move. You missed out on three potential high-level starters to get a linebacker who I don't really think linebacker is that valuable, especially Drew Sanders, who is unproven as a linebacker. Again, he was an edge rusher. It was the first time playing linebacker since high school. So I just don't understand that myself. I really don't understand it. And I love Drew. And I think the Minnesota Vikings could definitely use a linebacker. But trading back and getting him over a bunch of proven starters at more valuable positions, to me, doesn't make sense. Bengals going Luke Musgrave. I understand tight end is a position they like to go after, but Luke was injured all last year. I don't think he has earned the respect of a legitimate first round player. Um, that's my personal opinion. He's been in plenty of first round mock drafts, so I'm not going to say that it's invalid. But, you know, when you have offensive tackles on the board like Anton Harrison, I'd much rather continue investing in that and pretty much, you know, kick Lyle Collins to the curb or at least give him a kick in the ass than to go after an unproven receiving weapon. Because I was hoping Luke might be in the four fours, maybe the low four fives. Um, and I think he was like four, like low four six, maybe high four fives. Not that big of a discrepancy, but still, for me, it doesn't warrant that pick number 28. Saints going Kalijah. I keep saying it, go defensive tackle. I prefer Breezy here because you do have great veterans like Cam Jordan that could, you know, tweak a little bit of his um, processing mid play. But Kalijah is great. Um, then you got the Eagles going Keon White. At this point, why not go Breezy? If you're going to go Keon White, Keon's older. Um, he did a very good job testing. I think he ran in the four fives at 280 plus. And he's a solid player. It's just, again, like you can go into, like at the end of round two, if you want to reach on a player, go Isaiah McGuire. He didn't test that much more poorly than Keon White. He was more productive than Keon White. He's just a better player than Keon White, in my opinion. And um, that's my homer bias for him, but I'm also, you guys have known me, I'm not willing to um, to be too arrogant. I'm willing to say where guys mess up, and I, I do like Keon White, just nowhere close to 30, especially comparatively to the rest of the class, and there's just so many better prospects here, in my opinion. Pick number 31, the Chiefs go Cedric Tillman, and this was the cherry on top. Um, Cedric, he's a good receiver. He made even guys like um, Keely Ringo look a little bit silly within 15 yards. And I like Cedric Tillman, but there's just no way that he is worth remotely this close to the top. Like, I just don't see that true dominance. And he's a solid wide receiver, but you don't take a solid wide receiver at 31. You take a bona fide, legit five to 10 year starter at 31, or you take someone with unbelievable upside to me, it just does not make sense, but let's continue the mock draft. Okay, so for the Steelers, 
I was very ripped between Brian Breezy and Anton Harrison. I actually just restarted the video because I realized as soon as I made the pick, I forgot to see that Jordan Addison was on the board. Now, do I think maybe a tackle or a defensive interior might be better? Sure. But I do think that the value of adding the receiver to quarterback combo from college has a lot more impact, um, especially on chemistry, locker room enjoyability. Deontay Johnson is going to be up for a contract after next year. Jordan Addison is perfect for that. So Kenny times Jordan. Here we go. Pick number 33. I think Anton Harrison might be an excellent selection here. Brian Breezy, to me, has the biggest, again, needle moving aspect. Like when you think about it, you have pretty much one starting quality D tackle on a one year $9.5 million deal. So after next year, you really don't have anything that's that good. So I personally would want Brian Breezy here, have him mold for a year under a veteran presence and D'Amico can definitely teach him the way. Uh, just unbelievable potential here with Brian Breezy and I'm his number one hater. So, you know, I'm giving him credit where credit is due. It was just when he was in the top 10, top five, where I was like, ooh, let's, let's pause it for a moment. But at pick number 34, uh, you guys have already drafted an edge rusher in Will Anderson. I'll scroll down my board so you guys get to see it a little bit more. I know center and guard might be more valuable. It's so tough to pass on Anton Harrison here. To me, I think he is just that damn good. But um, looking at other spots, it would be hard to pass on an offensive lineman here. I am not doing trades for the second round because, you know, that's just, it is what it is. I do think John Michael Schmitz might get the nod here, a veteran presence to lead an offensive line. It's just going to be tough to bring in a kid, a kid who doesn't have as much experience as Schmitz to be able to be plug and play. And, um, you know, especially when Kyler gets back, probably don't want somebody who's still getting their feet wet in order to uh, lead that offensive line. But the Colts, again, traded with the Ravens. So didn't even have a first round pick, but essentially got Lamar Jackson for it. You have to protect him. And it's Avila or Torrance. I think Torrance fits exactly the role that they were looking to have. Uh, really good run blocker. He has some really awful whiffs. So that definitely concerns me, but it is what it is. The Rams, I'm going Anton Harrison here. Offensive line is key. And I do think that Anton is way too good to be on the board. Uh, Seahawks, sucks they don't need a right tackle, to be honest. But y'all have gone after Jalen Carter and Miles Murphy. You could see Josh Downs being a nice slot weapon for you at this point. But I might actually opt to be able to go for another defensive pick. And that is going to be Jack Campbell. I really do like Jack Campbell. But, I mean, you could look at another guy to be a nose I'm not going to do it at this point. I'm not going to get two interior defensive line picks. Uh, I think Trent Simpson might be moldable by uh, Bobby Wagner. That'd be cool. But Jack Campbell, you can't teach 250 at 6'5". And he's an incredible athlete for it too. Pick number 38 for the Raiders. Traded back got Darnell Wright. Uh, I think looking at the defensive backs on the board, again, it's, it's a little bit tough. Because I do really like Terry Stevenson. And I think he fits very well. Is also having a top 30 visit with... Um, with the Raiders, I am 99% sure. I know for sure that Keeley Ringo is at least meeting with them. Uh, Keeley might be the guy where you want to invest and, you know, test him out. Obviously, there's some people who think he could be a safety. I'm going to start pushing him back up the board, even though I don't believe this is the uh, where he should go. And I'm trying to see where I exactly have Keeley. I have Keeley at 50. So this is not asinine at all to take him here. I think he might go above the other guys because it's just ridiculous frame. He's had great moments and especially deep. You cannot, you cannot get past this guy unless you're Justin Shorter. For some reason, Justin Shorter was able to moss Keely Ringo. But, you know, in big moments, Keely Ringo has really shown up. And I think he has the most amount of work to do within that first 15 yards. And I think that based on the system they're trying to run there in Vegas, they're trying to copy Bill Belichick's style, which usually fails. But, you know, it is what it is. I think Keely Ringo could fit very well into that. And maybe they'll be able to work to his strengths like defensive coordinator should, because I do think at points, um, you know, a lot of these defensive backs were misused by their defensive coordinators. Pick number 39, though. Uh, Will McDonald's on the board. You guys did just sign somebody. I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head, but um, that could be a good selection to go after Will McDonald to get that edge rusher on the outside. Um, I wish Moten maybe, or I wish DeJuan Jones could kick into guard or something. I just love the potential of him. I'd obviously trade up with another team. 
Uh, BJ Ojolari might be a guy who you guys would really love. Mozzie's good too. There's a lot of great prospects here. Ade could be inside or out. Like the world's your oyster, so to speak, at this moment. And, you know, you could do whatever you want. Josh Downs would still be a nice weapon to have. I know you have Thielen there. Um, DJ Chark, you know, you do have weapons. Terrace Marshall. I don't think anybody fits the role of Josh Downs, though. I really don't. I think that he will have his own role here. So to change things up, also, you do, so to speak, take him away from an in-division rival. Because I think that Josh Downs is a very coveted pick that I would love to have there at pick 40. And I'm proving freaking Lance correct to pass on O-line for the damn Texans. Because it's kind of hard to just say that, you know, I got mad at him. But all of a sudden, Dewan Jones is here in the second round. That seems like incredible value. But um, I'm going to be going BJ Ojolari here. I mean, you could go Felix, could go BJ. Uh, I, I love the idea of keeping Louisiana players in Louisiana. Seen him in the first round to him quite often. I'm not going to look at anybody else for this pick, though. Dewan Jones is the obvious selection. Uh, I think that you could probably kick. Uh, he actually used to play with um, Nicholas Petit Ferrer on the other side. So it would be kind of cool to see Ferrer kick back to left tackle and have Jones and Ferrer once again. Uh, this is the one time I will trade. A lot of people are saying both of these picks are going to be traded to Green Bay. Um, I ain't going to do that one. But yeah, Green Bay is going to trade Aaron Rodgers for this pick as well as the next year's second. Argue with me over the trade value. It's not going to affect this mock draft. Uh, so Green Bay does have this pick. And again, proving Lance right to pass on a interior or on an edge rusher there because Felix definitely fits their type of profile. A solid run defender, good athlete, good size. Uh, maybe not as big as they like to go, but, you know, cry me a river. Pick number 43, already went offensive tackle. You got Aaron Rodgers there. Um, I hate to continue beating a dead bush. It's a dead bush. Are you serious? A dead horse. Um, Trenton Simpson's still here. I'm not going to pass on him no matter what. It just is the best value. Maybe another guy could slip in there is Sidney Brown, but, you know, I just Trent Simpson. It's such a weak linebacker class. There's a big fall off after him. So definitely worth it. Pick number 44. Uh, Falcons actually did a really good job in the first round. Will McDonald would not be an awful selection whatsoever at this pick, but I'm actually going to go out of Baware because one, he should be going earlier. He could go here to the, to the Packers again. If you want to do it, flop him. It really doesn't matter because I think he might be more valued as an interior threat, but you know, 449 speed, can't really teach that. And uh, Ade definitely will have a role here. Pick number 45 for Green Bay, tight end and edge rusher already acquired. Um, I mean, shoot, good players fall in the draft, man. That's the tough thing. You know, looking at other players who could fit, I could see Mozzie Smith not being an awful selection for them. But uh, again, I said that you should probably trade See, this is the reason why you should trade for Kyle Pitts. You can use him as a receiver too. Like right now, you could have traded for Kyle Pitts and then taken the selection on a tight end. And I think that would have been a great idea. But um, I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to put Cam Smith to safety. You know, Sidney Brown is a really fun one. I like to go Sidney Brown to this team. But I actually want to go Cam Smith because he's a corner that a lot of people, including Mike Renner, are believing could be a safety convert. To me, that's very valuable. And to be fair, Green Bay usually does take guys who are better at corner and puts them at safety and keeps them there. So it fits the mold. Pick number 46, Anthony Richardson was that first round selection. Hard to see them pass on Will McDonald here. But um, looking at the tackles available, Cody Mal could be intriguing. But yeah, I'm going to go Will McDonald, change things up a little bit for him. Pick number 47, uh, the linebackers available. I'm not that high on Diane Henley myself. Uh, Ivan Pace Jr. is probably my next guy. Him and Diane Henley would be my next two linebackers. So take it as you will. Um, defensive back to me still should be looked at, but um, man. Oh, they already went offensive line in the first round. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going Tyreek Stevenson here. I think that his upside is tremendous. I love, love, love me. Uh, so Emmanuel Forbes, but I'm not ready to take him over Tyreek based on the frame alone. Pick number 48. I might go Emmanuel Forbes here. Uh, just such good value. I know you guys already have a small dude, uh, but you got tight end. You guys have a corner. It's the reason why I say you should maybe trade back and get a linebacker is because, you know, not looking too hot. Uh, wide receivers, not good enough value here. 
it's a really tough spot if I'm going to be blunt with you guys. It's, yeah, you guys just are not in a good spot at this pick or the next one. Um, you know what? I'm going to take a pick for the future. I'm going to go Sidney Brown, pair him up there with his buddy they used to play with in Kirby Joseph. Yes, you don't need him, but we're kind of in a very sticky situation. And I mean, Mozzie Smith would have been a great selection, but I have a guy in mind for the next one. And like, you know, Sidney Brown won't be there, but the other guy probably will. Pick number 49 for the Steelers. I am going to go Mozzie for the Steelers. It's a good fit for them. I think Jared Clark later on. I know that I believe Jordan Reed brought this up. He also thinks it's a good fit for him. So if the Steelers do pass on him, that'd be a good move for the Steelers. Pick number 50. Uh, I still see Sam Laporta on the board. Darnell Washington's incredible. Uh, that's another reason why you, know, you don't take tight end for the Packers in the first. I'm going to be going after Sam Laporta because I think he's more of an all-around tight end. But also, you know, you can switch it if you want. I'm going to go the best of the two here for Miami. Miami will be able to use him in some way, shape, or form. So I do like that for him. Uh, pick number 52. So we've gone linebacker, edge rusher, defensive interior. I, I am going to look at the wide receivers, and Tank Dell could be very intriguing for this team. Uh, Rashi Rice, I could see them moving him into the slot. You know, he is somebody who is strong enough. He can play on the boundary, but um, this could be a guy that they really do like. I don't know. I have that gut feeling that they might really like Rice. But looking at other positions of value, I think Steve Avila might be too good to pass on here. And um, yeah, that's exactly where we're going to go. The Bears went after Lucas Van Ness in the first. So, I mean, to me, you need to address offensive line. And I'm going to use Cody Malk as a great addition for that tackle guard hybrid. Probably going to end up being a guard, but at least you're taking a swing on a guy who could be a tackle. Pick number 54, Jalen Hyatt was the first round selection for the Chargers. So with this pick, um, I might want to get some extra help at edge rusher for him. Running back, though, Austin Eckler wants a trade out of there. You could see Zach Charbonnet, but I'm just going to go after Jameer Gibbs. I think the value is too damn good. Pick number 55, we are back. We're back, and um, this is going to be Keanu Benton. So that's why. I just I think Keanu Benton's better than Mozzie. I think he fits a different role. I think the Steelers need more of a Mozzie role than a Keanu Benton. But either way, both teams were going to be very satisfied with whichever defensive interior they got. Pick number 56, uh, JPJ was round one selection for the Jaguars. Now, at this spot, I think Luke Whipler would be cool to move to guard. I think I criticized a mock draft recently of doing that. I actually want to potentially go Joe Tipman here, though. Pause. Nope. We're actually going to go after my top. <laughs> Before the combine, my top two corners in the draft. We're putting Emmanuel Forbes in the slot. I do not care. I think Emmanuel Forbes could be an absolute stud there. Now you have JPJ and Emmanuel Forbes. And Forbes can kick to the boundary if you don't want to pay Tyson Campbell and he gains some weight. Pick number 57 for New York. Uh, went after... Did you guys, you guys, what did you do in the first round? I'm tripping. Uh, Brian Branch talked about how uh, Wink Martindale loves his defensive backs. I think wide receiver still could be in the equation. It's just not a good draft for X level or X build receivers. I think corner might be the best route. It might be. And you got guys like Eli Ricks here, Garrett Williams, who are great. I think you continue giving Wink Martindale what he wants and you're bringing the Bama backfield into New York. Eli Rex pairing back up with Brian Branch. Pick number 58. So the Chargers, I am going to get Zach Charbonnet to beat Ezekiel Elliott mold. My buddy from my school, my former teammate, always dreamed of being a first round pick to the Cowboys. He's not a first round pick to him, but he is a second and he's a very good compliment to Tony Pollard. I think it's a great addition. The Bills got to keep their second round pick. I traded a third. There's no way in hell you trade a one and a two to move up four spots. Sorry uh, for the Vikings fans that were hoping that they might have a second round pick. But uh, for them, I might be going Tank Dell here more than anything. I think that his value in the long run is going to be very well coveted. He's an amazing separator in the short. And you disarm the Chiefs because that's probably the next spot I would take him. Uh, the Bengals, no O lineman available that I really like. Again, you could look at Zach Kuntz as an option uh, if you guys wanted to. But... You know, I'm sure that a tight end would have been on the board if you guys did not take one in the first. I still think safety is a very valuable position to target. Joe Tipman could be an intriguing guy to develop for a year. Uh, other 
Other guys of note, I like Jamie Robinson. I always take Antonio Johnson, so I'm trying to change that a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to get Garrett Williams. I think I am. I'm going to have him rest for a year. I know defensive backs is actually a heavy position of need. And people do think Garrett Williams could transition to safety. He was my number two corner in the class or number three at the start of the year. And he was a top 15 player towards ACL. And I think that he's going to have a really good bounce back season uh, when he gets healthy. Pick number 61 for the Bears. So we have addressed Lucas Van Ness and Cody Malk. So kind of two more raw players at their position. You could look at a running back here, but I kind of just took the best ones. Devon A-Chain is really fun though. I know a lot of people hate when I go that for the Bears, but you got to admit, I mean, it's it's definitely fun. Defensive interior wise, I can't see anything being worth it remotely, um, but I definitely do like the idea of a corner on this team. Julius Brents, Jalen Jones, they have gone after slower defensive backs. I'm going to go after Jalen Jones just because he's at like six foot three frame, even though six foot two, 200 is amazing. I just think Julius will go before Jalen Jones. And even though I have Jalen Jones higher, um, I'm still going to take Julius Brents here. Then the Eagles. So this would have been another great spot for Garrett Williams, to be fair. But they do not get to go that route. You guys have gone after at, I'm forgetting now, Keon White at number 30, as well as uh, Peter Skaronsky. So you went offensive line as well as edge rusher. That's a, it's a sticky spot. I mean, you can see Antonio Johnson being a good addition to this team at this point. Uh, running backs again, Devon a chain might be that guy who could be that difference maker for you. And it honestly might move the needle the most. And unfortunately I wish I could have done the draft differently. No interior defense alignment, good enough available. I'm going to go Devon a chain, uh, to be able to just have your own version of Isaiah Pacheco. And speaking of the team that has Isaiah Pacheco, Kansas City Chiefs ending off this continuation of the mock draft. You guys went after a wide receiver in round number one. And, uh, for this pick, I think that edge rusher could be the right selection. Uh, I do think Derek Hall would be a good choice. He's a solid veteran, man. He's a very solid veteran and great frame, long arms, kind of, I think his nickname was pterodactyl. So uh, definitely somebody that you're going to have some proven talent there on the outside. So that is going to be the draft. Here is the results for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys on the far side.